right now, it might be worth paying some interest to keep cash on hand. Because what if you pay off a credit card or pay off a home equity line of credit and we hit a really tough time like 2009 was? The banks might start saying, hey, I know that this is a $10,000 available balance. We're going to cut that down to 4000 because we don't want that risk. Or yeah. we're not going to let you have a line of credit anymore because we are tapped out and people are defaulting. So that's something to be really aware of mm -hmm. that even though it might be available now, it might be not be available a year from now. Money can be complicated. Let a nerd help you. We're here to demystify the complex nature of money by getting you answers from financial nerds and whiz kids. Welcome to Ask the Money Nerds, a weekly segment of the Wealth Labs podcast where we answer your most pressing money questions. How much money should you put down for a house payment? Should you pay off credit cards or save money for a down payment? What are the best options for loans and institutions? Like, where do you go to get the money? Our question today is one that will unlock one of the mysteries that make finance so e so much easier. All right, Stolva, let's do this thing. We have Christy's question today. I don't even call you by your real last name anymore. I know. Let people <laughs> like uh, be confused yeah. which it is. Is They're it with like a B? Stolva. Is it with a B? Yeah, I know. It was already it's confusing a new to a lot of people beforehand. Chief of staff. Just another nickname. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. So Christy's question. Okay, let's hear it. She says, hello, nerds. Glad you are here. We're glad you're with us in this community, Christy. She says, my husband and I are saving for a house. Is it best to save more money for a down payment and pay on credit cards? Or would it be better to pay off more cards or debt with a little down payment? It's hard to save and pay off debt at the same time. Yep. Also, can we get a loan if I am on furlough from work? Okay, so... The first step for everyone is the simple pay yourself first. So automatically sweeping money into a separate account. You go to make a deposit in your checking, mm -hmm. have an automatic percentage move to a different checking account that we call Wealth Capture. Yes. So you don't have to think about it, right? Yeah. And I always say it's a game changer. So it's an easy first step to implement that will change the game for you. Yep. And then just make sure you don't borrow to consume after that, that you don't mm -hmm. go out of bounds, right? Mm -hmm. So that you've got enough money. Now. A down payment on a home, when you put 20% down, you avoid PMI, private mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. So that could be really helpful. There's also a trick sometimes people can use where they can get a first mortgage for 80% and a second mortgage for some remainder amount. Okay. The second mortgage might be a line of credit. It might just be a, a shorter period of time, like a 15 year loan, where your first might be a 30 year loan, but they'll typically charge you a little bit higher interest rate. So you wanna compare that higher mm -hmm. interest rate payment to the private mortgage insurance payment. Okay. How would also they go like, about doing that? Oh, you just simply go, okay, if I just put whatever whatever money down, here's my payment on my mortgage, and with a PMI, private mortgage insurance, what's that total payment? Versus mm -hmm. if I split it where 80% is a first and 15% is my second mortgage, what's the payment there? You just compare mm -hmm. which one is a lower payment. Okay. Um, would you use your cash flow index in that situation or the really investment index? In a minute, maybe. Okay. But first, you're just looking and seeing, like, what's the most money out of your pocket? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you do make a bigger down payment, what I want people to measure is with the additional down payment, how much money is saved. Mm -hmm. And so here's what's going to bring this together. Cost of money. You've yeah. heard me talk about it many a times. Yes. So it's your highest rate of return that you can earn sustainably. So not some like magic, like where you hit lightning in a bottle and you got the perfect real estate deal or bought the perfect business opportunity or invested during a time where the market went up 30%. That's not sustainable. We're looking at what can you count on? Mm -hmm. What can you earn that's reasonably safe and sustainable? That's your cost of money. Or okay. if you pay a 17% interest rate on a credit card, mm -hmm. that's your cost of money. Because every time you don't pay that credit card down, that's costing you 17% more, mm -hmm. right? So once you know your cost of money, you get an idea of should you put more money down mm -hmm. or should you hold on to more cash? And in today's economic environment, holding on to cash is important. Okay. People are losing their jobs. 1.8 million businesses went out of business so far in 2020. 1.8? That are either not open and they may reopen mm -hmm. or they went bankrupt. Wow. So we're that's according to the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty substantial, that's a lot more than this time in 2008. Mm -hmm. So having access to cash might be one of your best, most important assets because it might help you bridge the gap if times get tight or yeah. tough or volatile. Mm -hmm. So normally I, I love for people to pay off their credit cards because they're really high interest rates typically. They're not great for your credit score, especially if you've utilized more than 30% of what's available to you. Mm -hmm. And there's just a certain peace of mind to it. Right now though, 
of paying down a mortgage is going to be less efficient than paying off a credit card. Paying off a credit card is typically going to free up more money because mortgages can be 15 or 30 years in length or even interest only in some cases. Yeah. Most credit cards are gonna force a payment that's going to be higher, plus the interest rates are typically higher, simply because when you have collateral, you usually get better interest rates. Car loans are lower interest rates than credit cards. Mortgages mm -hmm. are lower interest rates than credit cards. What I really wanna see people do in this situation is know their cost of money mm -hmm. so you can be informed. Hey, if I use this cash to pay this mortgage down but keep the credit cards, that's not as good for my credit score and I'm probably not gonna save as much money mm -hmm. per month, right? Mm -hmm. So just just look at the credit card payment and if you pay that off versus if you you know have to pay private mortgage insurance because that's an additional fee that's protecting the banks, by the way, because they're saying, oh, you didn't give us enough down payment mm -hmm. in case you default, we don't like, how, you know, we're gonna sell this asset for less than probably what it's worth. Banks are terrible at reselling homes. They have a division called REO, real estate owned, mm -hmm. which is the stuff they foreclosed on. And in 2008, they had a massive in inventory. They're selling it for pennies on the dollar just to unload it. So what they really want you to do is make your mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. That's why they look at your credit score. That's why they look at your taxes. That's why they look at a lot of your history. That other stuff is just their contingency plan. So the likelihood is paying off credit cards is gonna be more useful. There's a caveat to this that's really important. Okay, tell us about it. It's called seasoned money. Mm -hmm. So seasoned money is how much money do you have in your bank account that's been there for at least three months. And that kind of lets them know what your average balance is and do you have cash to handle you know, some bumps along the way. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you just pay off the credit cards, you, you know, make a smaller down payment, that's gonna free up more cash flow. that's gonna improve your credit score more, that's gonna give you more tax deductible money with the interest on a mortgage, depending on how much income you earn. But this is someone who's furloughed right now, so their income is probably down. Yeah. So uh, let's see, any other parts of that question that I missed to answer? I think it's part two that we could touch on a little more is, d do you think she could get a loan if she is, since she is furloughed? Yeah, I'll answer two things, including that. Okay. Look, we always pay interest. Whether you pay cash, mm -hmm. it's just harder to see that. You forfeit the right to earn interest. Yeah. Even if it was a- It's so easy uh, even to if forget. It was, yeah, even if it was just a, a money market earning you 1%, you no longer get to earn that if you pay cash. So mm -hmm. you forfeit the right. Obviously, if we borrow, we pay interest. Mm -hmm. So we always know there's an interest cost. It's just that the one's easier to see because we're writing a check for it or automatically having it come out of our account. So understanding that's really important that we're always paying interest. And I think that you just gotta look, is it more important to save interest or try to earn interest? And for the majority of the population, mm -hmm. paying off interest is actually the better strategy because it's safe, it's guaranteed, mm -hmm. it might help their credit score, there's peace of mind that comes along with it, but that depends. Right now, it might be worth paying some interest to keep cash on hand. Because what if you pay off a credit card or pay off a home equity line of credit and we hit a really tough time like 2009 was. The banks might start saying, hey, I know that this is a $10,000 available balance. We're gonna cut that down to 4,000 because mm. we don't want that risk or yeah. we're not gonna let you have a line of credit anymore because we are tapped out and people are defaulting. So that's something to be really aware of that mm -hmm. even though it might be available now, it might be not be available a year from now. And in furlough and stuff like that, it's, it's definitely gonna impact how much you're gonna qualify for. Mm -hmm. Right, because they're going to look at the situation and the cash flow, and there's a recency bias, is maybe what you'd call it, like what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. So you could have had an amazing income last year, less of an income this year, and they don't really care if it's COVID or not. They don't, no. They're just simply going, "What are your chances of default?" Yeah. And I think they're a little bit more nervous and cautious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not in the business of being empathetic. <laughs> That's not, not not the time for it. No, um, they're looking at spreadsheets and they're looking at numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you get into a portfolio bank where it's looking more like at a relationship, but you have to have a certain amount of wealth or money, unfortunately, to get to that part, mm -hmm. get to that place. Yeah. And so when you're talking about having them having cash on hand, mm -hmm. you typically say three to six months of yeah, living expenses. And, and ideally years, but that's mm -hmm. a little hard to get to. And with cash flow banking, a lot of times that comes mm -hmm. through cash value of insurance policies. Yeah. But yeah, my, my preference is one month expenses in cash in a safe, mm -hmm. one month in silver and gold, or just, you know, silver, just depending on how much money you have. You know, I actually would recommend some form of cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. 
uh, even though I know it's volatile, even though it's the Wild West, it's a different currency. So mm -hmm. as things change, it just gives you kind of a hedge. And then three months in the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not there, it may even make sense. And this is this pains me to say this is not my normal advice. But in today's crazy times, mm -hmm. when you refinance, you might want to pull a little bit of equity out. Yeah, don't. But my concern is I say that and someone goes and blows the money, mm -hmm. right? They go and buy some toy or something where they're like, Oh, it should get a K&M or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But no, it's just having enough cash to weather any uh, you know, financial surprise. We're all going to have financial surprises. Most definitely. They don't have to derail you if you prepare. Mm -hmm. It's hard to prepare because we're already dealing with enough things when we're acting to all the time because things are moving quick. Things are changing quick. People, you know, mm -hmm. job turnovers happening more frequently. Um, you know, there's just all sorts of things that happen. You know, we have a lot of people like, you know, fortunately, like there was a time where I, I had really tough cash flow and my son needed tons of medical attention, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of it wasn't covered by insurance. And we fortunately had family kind of step up and help. Mm -hmm. But you never know when those kind of things happen. It's, it's hard right. to plan for those things. So you just have to plan by doing the right things mm -hmm. whenever you can. Yeah. And even if you hate paying interest, having some cash on hand is worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you know how to turn your thoughts into profits and protect yourself and to have more liquidity and have permission that, hey, it's not the end of the world if you pay some interest. Do everything you can not to borrow to consume, not to over consume, not to buy things that you think are going to make you happy, but don't bring you fulfillment simply because you're frustrated. The important thing is take care of yourself financially, have the knowledge, watch these videos, go grab my book, Budgeting Sucks. It's very inexpensive. It's a very small investment. I think you get the, the book and the audio book for like six bucks. So not a huge investment. I'm putting these videos out here all the time. If you want to get really detailed and know what you can do to plug the leaks, keep more of what you make, exactly get, you know, strategies like we're talking about here today. Budgetingsucks.com. Pretty cool resources. Pretty cool resource. All right. Turn your thoughts into profits and build the life you love.